pessoal, eu vou mudar a chavinha para inglês porque essa é a nossa primeira entrevistada internacional. Então, hi Ada, welcome to hi. our uh, broadcasting live. Uh, Ada is the first speaker that gave the first keynote. It was awesome. So I wanted to ask you a little bit more about uh, web APIs and the work that you do because your talk was super interesting. And like it even gave me some really nice ideas about things that I could actually incorporate to my project. So uh, what do you what are you more, more, most excited about what web APIs at the moment? Um, so in the front end, I've been doing a lot of work with um, with custom properties and a lot of the, the new features Houdini is bringing into the web platform. And they are really, really incredible. Um, so um, like being able to have a CSS file with, which is a lot more powerful than, than a lot of modern developers would expect. So a developer who's, who, whose approach to CSS is, oh, I suppose I have to deal with it eventually. Um, now, if they look at all the stuff that CSS can bring you, like I'm hoping it gives them, wow, I, I didn't realize it was this powerful. It can yeah, solve totally. a lot more problems than I gave it credit for. So yeah, totally. Yeah, that's that's what I saw. Like, that's super valuable to my life as uh, a developer because that's something that we have to deal with daily. Yeah. And then we finally have a good solution for it. Um, awesome. So I heard you are very into uh, VR and that's sort of uh, the technology area that it's very hyped at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so what are you uh, looking into right now about VR? Um, so right now in VR, um, I'm doing some work with the, um, with the Immersive Web Community Group and Future Working Group um, to bring augmented reality and virtual reality to the web platform. This is amazing. Um, yeah, it's going to be really, really cool. You can already use virtual reality in the web today. The, the web VR 1.1 APIs are out there and they're supported in quite a few browsers. Um, you can do it with all, all major headsets. Um, I believe it's really powerful because a lot of native VR applications nowadays are built for one piece of hardware, one set of controllers, and you have to download some big 100 yeah. megabyte app to have a go with it. Yeah. And the web allows us to, you, you land on a web page and you put on your headset, it doesn't matter what it is, and you can be like, whoa, this is amazing. Do VR for a few minutes because you've just landed, yeah. you don't have to install anything, you can just try it out and when you're done, there's nothing left on your computer, you haven't You don't have to clean up gigabytes of files because you now don't want to do it anymore. Like it's, I think um, VR for the web is going to be extremely beneficial for VR and AR as as media platforms. But also, I really think the future of using these devices in the next five to ten years, um, we're going to be a lot using a lot more virtual reality and augmented reality devices. And I think the web needs to handle these devices really well. Totally. Otherwise, the web isn't going to be valid on these devices or as valid on these devices. Yeah. So totally. like better start now while before, so we can get like a good head start. Totally. On yeah. Is that what you think it's the biggest challenge in VR at the moment? Like compatibility and being able to be like cross platform? Um, it's definitely a challenge um, to like build something that works well everywhere. Um, I mean, it's a challenge on the web as well. Like, like the the WebXR APIs would just be one stepping stone to remove one barrier. You still have to test across devices from phones to high-end gaming computers. Like, you can't um, you can't stop testing. Um, but I think. One of the biggest challenges we have in VR today is user interfaces because yeah, it's, so it's an entirely new form of hardware where not only do we not know how to like, build for it in a smart way, we're, we're, everything we do is very different. There's no standard set of patterns yet. And it's still, it's still very much the wild west of, of user interfaces. And so 
it feels right now everything we build is very skeuomorphic like if you want to travel somewhere you have to click on a door yes or yeah. you have to walk somewhere or you have to like fly there um or if you want to to go to a new place you have to pick up an object and put it on your head or do something that seems kind of natural yeah whereas i think um which kind of reminds me of like the early like like windows navigator kind of um very skeuomorphic interfaces yeah, totally. where where radio buttons look like radio buttons yeah. Like, if you want to view your files, you have to click on a filing cabinet. Yeah. If you want to put something in the bin, you yeah. have to drag it to the bin. Things just didn't seem natural at all, right? Yeah. yeah. Whereas, um, like, I think if you showed, like, Windows 10 to a user of Windows 3.1, they'd be like, I don't get it. This is, this awesome. is like, because yeah. they don't get the metaphors. Totally. And I think for VR, we are like the users of Windows 3.1. We're, we're in the very early days of these new forms of interfaces yeah totally and i'm looking forward to see what happens in 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 five to ten years yeah time. we all are well yeah. thank you very much i loved having you here and i loved your talk absolutely loved I'm really your glad talk. You liked it. and thank you, thank you for being a part of our live broadcast <laughs>